This lecture is on cnidarians. Cnidarians are going to be found on page 5 of your invertebrate booklet. Cnidarians belong to the kingdom cnidaria, and the word cnidaria means stinging cells. We're going to start with looking at the characteristics of cnidarians. Just to recap, you're going to want to write down any words that I put on the slides as that is the information that you need to know, and I have limited it to strictly what you need to know. Cnidarians have radial symmetry. Radial symmetry means they have symmetry along an axis. You can see that illustrated in the picture to the right. Cnidarians are also going to have movement. We know that movement is a characteristic of animals with the exception of sponges, but they did have some small movement and cnidarians are gonna now um, illustrate that a lot better. And we'll take a look at that as we go forward. And then they are gonna have responses. So they're gonna able to they're going to be able to respond to their environment, but they still don't have a brain. So sponges did not have a brain, cnidarians don't have a brain. And it's gonna be a, a couple more phyla till we see those uh, brains kick in. There are two types of body structures that cnidarians can be found in. And there's a box that is on your notebooklet page where I would like you to sketch an image of a polyp and of a medusa. The polyp is the sessile version of the cnidarian. It's going to be stuck to the ground. These are like sea anemones. These are corals. Then the medusa is the free-floating um, cnidarian body form. And this is going to be more of our jellyfish that we see. So go ahead and please make sure you sketch those out in the box below. Cnidarians have a gastrovascular cavity and this cavity is going to be where food and waste go into and come out of. So as you can see in this picture here, this whole cavity is where their food is going to go into. They're going to digest it and then that opening, they only have one opening and that opening is both their mouth and their anus. So they take food into that opening and then they expel waste out of that opening. They also have these cells here, which are going to be how they get their food. These cells have um, teeny tiny little um, stinging cells on them, which is where their name comes from, that are going to um, grasp their prey and um, harm them and you know neutralize them to pull them into that mouth. Just like with sponges, cnidarians can reproduce both sexually and asexually. And just like in sponges, asexual reproduction is going to be found in the form of budding. So they're going to be able to bud and reproduce asexually that way. Otherwise, um, sexual reproduction is going to also be quite similar to sponges where the females have eggs and the males are going to release sperm into the water in hopes that uh, fertilization takes place. Here's a picture of what budding looks like. So you can see all of these here are buds off of this one anemone. And then here is a bud off of a hydra. There are three groups of cnidarians and these are gonna be their classes. So we have domain, kingdom, phylum, cnidarian, uh, and then the classes, there are three within the cnidarians. Hydrozoans are the first. These are Portuguese man of war and hydras. So you can see this here is a Portuguese man of war, and here this is a hydra. Hydra are really small. You can see that they are, you know, millimeters in size, so they are quite tiny. Another class of cnidarians is the cyphozoans. The cyphozoans are the jellyfish, and these are active predators. Because they're in that medusa form, they're going to be out and about seeking prey and using those sting cells to you know, stunt the prey and pull them into the mouth for feeding. The last class of cnidarians are the anthozoans. These exist only as polyps, so they're not going to be free floating. However, I do have a video of an anemone that is able to function and move, and it uh, tries to get away from. Uh, just an intruder in its space and it's kind of funny because it's still a polyp so it's not a medusa it's not free floating but it does have the ability to pick up and, and move itself in that instance examples of anthozoans are sea anemones and corals so anemones are where nemo lived and then corals are going to be um, kind of more cal calcium based and um, 
they have like a calcium carbonate structure that they live in and then the coral itself actually pops its head through that outer piece to feed and then hides and uses that to to hide a lot of sea-based creatures live in coral reefs because if you can look right here this is all you know old coral that has died and new coral that settled on it and built it so that calcium carbonate kind of skeleton is able to house a lot of different creatures and act as a foundation for other creatures to to build and live on one of the problems that we've talked about before with the ocean getting hotter and taking in more carbon dioxide is that it's becoming more acidic and corals are one of the larger groups of organisms that is in danger because of that because of that calcium carbonate structure it is in the presence of acid which is carbonic acid um, when carbon when carbon dioxide gets in the ocean water and it mixes with that it's going to dissolve those structures and they're not going to be able to live there anymore and on that sad note, that is the end of our Nidarian notes.